Hey everybody and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're looking at ladders, but we're looking at ladder creation uh, procedurally. So I first off created this ladder in uh, Blender. It took me 30 seconds, but as you can see, it's very flawed. Um, the struts, the, the steps aren't aligned correctly. Um, and the problem with this is if I wanted to keep putting ladders into the world, I'd have to either create a new one or edit this one manually in UE5 to get the correct shape and size. Whereas I decided to look into procedurally creating a ladder that I can use um, basically on the fly, um, like so. I can even change the widths of the steps if I want to. I can have more or less. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this before we set up the functionality of the ladder for our player. So come here to, I, I mean, you find your own location, but mine's in my assets and ladder. Uh, there's the one I've already created, but let's create a new blueprint actor just so I can show you. I'll call this plea ladder two underscore BP. Open it up and add in first of all a I'm just gonna add in a cube and call this um, first of all set it to like 0 0.01 rename it to ladder top we're gonna need to add another uh, component another cube which I'm gonna call ladder L again set this to 0 0.1 0 0.1 and leave that as one for now and I'm also going to set the location to 30. Like, no, I'm not going to set it to minus 30. Create another one called ladder R. This one, make sure it's not a child of the L. It needs to be a standalone one. Uh, again, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. No, that's wrong. Set that to 1. And instead of 300, we want it to be minus 30. No, we don't want it to be 30, like so. There we go. All set up exactly how it should be. Compile. Next thing we want to do is come to the event graph. We want to create a new custom event. Call it uh, ladder int. And call that function in event begin play. There we go. Next thing we want to do <coughs> is uh, pull off our ladder top, get the ladder, uh, no, we want to get get relative location, and we're going to split that structure like so. Uh, compile and get ladder R and ladder L like so. Uh, we don't need R for now. Get uh, that relative. We want the relative transform for this one. And we also want to set relative transform. Like so. Uh, no. We don't want the message. Sorry. We want the actual set relative transform. Get the actual transformation, not the message. That's the mistake I made there. There you go. Uh, make a little bit of space. Split this structure. Um, and we can split the new transform as well. We can set rotation straight up to rotation. We don't need to change anything with that. But we do need to split both of these. The scale and the location pins. So it's going to look a bit crazy. Split the same for our ladder L transform. And hook up both X and Y values just like so there we go now we want to divide this by two and divide this by 100 no click the divide first then add in the 100 the first one goes into location and the second one goes into the z scale like so compile that and i will explain uh where is it viewport so if we set this to 100, for example, so location 100 
it goes up to there. But if we set this to 50, you'll see that it meets like so. So for we know that every unit of measure is one. And for this, every unit of measure is 0 0.5. So we need to divide that 100 by 0 0.5 so that they get the same transform, basically. You can should be able to set this back to normal. It won't really make much difference shortly. The, the next thing we want to do is, um, oh, I'm in the wrong one, that's why. Giving you a bit of a sneak peek there. Um, we want to go back to our event graph and we want to, except for the ladder L, we want to collect all this, drop it into a macro, uh, and we want to open that macro. We want to add this to the output so that we can continue on the function along. Come back to the event graph. Oh, sorry. First thing, we also want to get rid of that self too and click that self into both instead. It just makes it a bit neater. You can even call self ladder if you want to. There we go, compile. Go back to the event graph. You'll need to refresh the node if you do delete that out. Copy, paste our new macro into there and stick the R into there too. Um, Compile. Now what we want to do is we also want to put this into our construct construct script. Otherwise, we won't be able to affect this change in here. So you can already see it's moved and now we've got already our uh, two frames in place. So always make sure that all of this, everything we create goes into that, uh, that macro, sorry, into here. That macro goes into the construct script like so. If you don't put it in there, you will not be able to amend it within the uh, viewport or in the editor window either. That is a, a point you need to remember. Now, we need to go back to our viewport. We need to add in two things. We want an instance static mesh, which we can leave as instance static mesh. It really doesn't make much difference. And we want to just get one more cube. And the reason for that is we want to know what we set our scale as. So you can set this up however you want. Um, I'm not gonna change it too much. I'm just gonna make sure that it sits correctly and within the shape confines um, of these two uh, frames, okay? You can set up however you want. You can have thinner slabs if you want. You can have thicker ones. It does not matter too much. But what we do need to do is just make sure that these values are more or less as whole as we can have them. Um, oh, it should be 0 0.05, my mistake, there we go. Um, the reason for that is we're gonna set that in the actual uh, event graph, not in um, not in the, in here, basically. We can get rid of that cube once we set that value up. So next we wanna make a few variables. They're all gonna be of type float, so change it to float first. Uh, we want to call the first one uh, temp underscore, we'll call it temp height, like that. And we're gonna set that first up. We're gonna set that straight away, like so. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call one called step gap. And we'll use that in a minute. And the final one we want is the height, which is gonna be the frame height. Next thing we wanna do is get this instant static mesh and we want to clear all of our instances. The reason for that is that every time we drop the height and up and down, if we don't clear the instances first, it will just leave them there. And then you'll be left with a frame and loads of instances going up or down, depending. Um, next thing we wanna do is we want to get a while loop like that. We also want to add instance. And then that's where this will now recreate everything after it's cleared those instances. So every time you move it, it's gonna clear the instances and re-put them in uh, afterwards. So next we wanna get our temp height figure and we want to check that something is less than that. And that is gonna be our ladder top. Get the ladder top, get a relative location, split that strut and stick that into Z into there. Leave the X and Y, but add that, that, Z in, that Z into there, and then add that condition into the while loop, like so. Uh, once we've done that, we want to add, and now this is where our step gap will come into place, and we want to make sure those are both 
uh, exposed by the way the height and the step gap and then all we've got left to do is set our temp height like so the last thing we want to do is just uh, set that instance transform to so split the structure split the uh, location uh, make this a little bit further down uh, and we want to just chuck that temp height into there and compile if this isn't set up correctly like this and you um, compile it it might crash if you don't set this up all the way first don't compile midway through make sure all of this section is set up first before you hit that compile otherwise it's gonna it is definitely gonna crash uh, it happened to me twice collect all this up right click create another macro um, well it, it, the names don't matter you can call it whatever you want I've already set this up once before so I'm not gonna rename them for that reason compile go to the construction section but add that new macro in okay um, compile and Oh, it's crashed. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. Oh, it hasn't. Okay. Whew, that was close. Okay. There's some other things we obviously need to do that I haven't done. <laughs> oh, it's because... No, sorry. It's because... I know exactly why it is. It's because if we go to our viewport and click on that, we haven't actually set a, a gap height. So... Set that to 20... No, I said 20, 20, set the height to 100, and then click on that, and you should, hopefully, mm. uh, let's, um, let's put this into the world quickly and just see what it looks like, uh, yeah, this is exactly what it wanted. So just rotate it 90 so we can see what it looks like. Hey, there you go. It is working. There we go. Brilliant. Um, it's just possibly not working in the viewport for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Delete that cube out. We don't need it. Oh, I know why it's not working. Because we didn't put our scale in. Uh, so let's undo what I just did. Grab that. Um, in the x value, put 0 0.08. You, you can you can put whatever values you've set yours up to be, but those are the values I've used: 0 0.08, 0 0.54, and 0 0.05. Now in the viewport, we still don't have something. Okay, but if we go to the world, we do. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, we can now just amend the height as much as we want. It's working completely fine. Uh, it's just not working in the viewport for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but, you know, it's all good. Uh, click the cube. Delete. Um, that is working fine. I don't know why this isn't working. Um, but it's, it's okay. Oh. It's not working because I haven't set it up to uh, be a cube. Interesting that it's still working in the level though. Now it's working. Fine. Uh, don't click on that one though. Click on uh, <laughs> click on the lower top. There you go. It's absolutely working fine. There we go. Uh, and it's as simple as that, guys. Uh, it should be all working now uh, in game as well. So if you click into your game, it will automatically be there for you. Uh, and now all we need to do in the next ladder, in the next ladder, in the next episode is um, add in some collision boxes, add in the animations and get that player up and down that ladder now. Um, hopefully this is helpful, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode because I really enjoyed this, I thought this was a really clever way of doing ladders. Um, I'm definitely going to be using this in my game to get, um, because you could just set whatever you need now um, in any location and you can just pull it up and it will automatically create it for you. And I've already got a pretty good understanding of how to do this um, procedurally as well for allowing the player to jump on and off. So thank you so much guys for watching. I hope that's been helpful. Um, leave a little like, leave a little comment uh, if there's any tutorials you want me to cover. And uh, of course, if you've enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you can always change your mind down the line and it really helps the channel. 
Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.